What up? This is Shan and this is Cozy Womb Podcast. This is Ari. Say hi. Hi. Say hi, Anya. Hi. What up? What up, y'all? This is Cozy Womb Podcast, and this is episode 76, Step Parents and Boundaries. Hope you guys are enjoying your day. I got a little surprise this morning that has me parked. So, um, I'm going to use my time wisely and give you guys an episode. So, let's go. Step parents, man. Um, I mean, what can I say? Families change, and new married spouses become step parents sometimes. Even when that's the case, the biological parents' wishes should be respected. There are always boundaries, and I think a lot of people have um, negative outcomes because people aren't respected and people do not know um, where they're responsible to play a certain position within a spouse's biological child that is not theirs. So we're just going to discuss some of that. You know, step parents can have their rules in their home. That's fine. But biological parents whether your spouse's child and their ex has a child together, the wishes for that child on how that child is treated, talked to, dealt with, um, and cared for come first. And if, if you have a problem with that as a step-parent, meaning you are married to that child that isn't yours, father or mother then you need to sit down and talk to both parents and y'all need to discuss um what you know you want that I don't like and vice versa and figure that out and if it cannot be figured out then that child doesn't need to be in your personal space that child doesn't need to be in your home and I think if everybody has a respected relationship involving that child um it's few negative uh things that can happen you know i have two kids neither one of their fathers have wives but one of their fathers has a girlfriend and i've spoken to her once about how ari should be watched and taken care of do i for sure know that she's respecting those things no but I've said it. Um, I would hope that she is. And if she isn't, I hope that I never have to find out because that's a whole nother level. Um, That I don't want to have to deal with because if it was vice versa and being that she is not married to her father. Ari, come here. She took off her pants or her pull-up? Why did you take off your pants? She have on a diaper? She have on a diaper? Go lotion your face and stop scratching it. So, um, with step parents, there is no second mama. With your boyfriend or your girlfriend, there is no second dad. There is no mama when you're a girlfriend. Um, it's just, just confusing to a child and... I want to do it to any of my kids if I was dating and somebody would felt like, you know, because I'm here, I want them to call me this. No, that's not the case. Go in the room. So, um, I think step parents can discipline 
their way only if the biological parents agree. Um, you know, if you feel like spanking a child that's not yours biologically, that's where you stop and you leave the situation and you call that parent into play. You know, if things get to a point where you just like, mm, you're not my child, I cannot put my hands on you, I cannot do this, I cannot do that, where's your father, where's your mom? That's how that should go. I think if people focus on the positive influences that they can have on a stepchild, you'll be fine. You know, you know, figure out your own way of bonding. Don't be overbearing. Give a child space. Give them the room to know that you're available if they want to come to you. A legal guardian is appointed by the court. It is not something that's verbally given from either biological parent. Don't be a disciplinarian. Like, that's not your position. You know, that's the parent's job. Focus on being real, authentic, and you're bonding. Spend time with the kid. Go to the park with the kid. Talk to the kid. Watch a movie with the kid. Um, cook together. Make cookies. Do something where you're engaging with that child so you can develop your own relationship. If you're a step-parent. If you're a boyfriend or a girlfriend. <sighs> I try not to involve my kid in people that I'm dating uh, or people I people that I know for a long time I'm talking like five plus ten years and they're around my kid I don't mind it because the fact that I'm allowing you to be around my kid I must trust you and you know your character speaks for itself so I'm comfortable but when there's brand new people that you're dating I think you need to take your time I think if you want to go out, you figure out someone to watch the kids for you. I think if you want to bring them to your home, you figure out someone to keep the kids for you so they're not here. You know, that is the responsible way to go about introducing new people that you're dating that may be boyfriend or girlfriend with your kids. If your um, boyfriend and girlfriend, I would say four to five months in, that's where I would introduce, you know, my kid to um, somebody that I'm dating, you know, somebody that I'm in a relationship with, because you don't want your child seeing various people come in your life and out your life and in your life and out your life, because that's going to train them to think that, oh, that's something that's okay. Oh, that's something that should be tolerated. Oh, that's not that's not a big deal and it is a big deal because everyone that you bring into your life that's around your kid has some type of influence and you have to be mindful of that you know boyfriend and girlfriends are not a permanent factor yet until you make them your married spouse be clear about who you are with the stepchild I think if you're like you know what I love your mother, I love your father very much, and um, we care about each other, and, you know, this is your stepsister, and, you know, your family, and we want you to be here, and my name is this, you can call me this, no, I am not your mother, no, I am not your father, if that is explained, I feel like you're good, until that woman or that man becomes your spouse you have a name that you want to give that child that is not yours not a mama not a daddy but a name that you would like them to call you respectfully what are you hush um i think that's basic you know there should be no bad mouthing of the ex with um, the parent because your kid is going to pick up on that. Are you reading? The what? Bath. Book. Um, there's some things that, you know, we're going to get into. 
All right, Shane, read me a book. Mommy, I'll be right back. Mommy? That's all right. Say what? So, for step parents, I would not recommend you getting into conversations with your spouse and about what the other parent wants. I feel like the conversation about your stepchild and your spouse should be between you and your spouse. The conversation that you want to have about something important should between should be between the spouse and the other parent. Now, if you want more positivity with the other parent, try to create a positive relationship. Try to create a space where you guys can share a dialogue about uh, your spouse's child that they have together, that you have together. And I think that's going to help it a lot. Anya, quiet down. Um, arguments between your stepchild and their parent in your home that you're married to. I would say if you agree with the kid, you'll look like a scapegoat to the person you're married to. And you'll look like you're not helping the situation. And then if you agree with the dad or the mom that you're married to, you'll be viewed as you're not minding your beeswax from the kid. And the kid might resent you for always buddying and not knowing what's going on, quote unquote. You might fully well know what's going on, but they're going to feel like, who are you to have something to say about what I'm talking about to my parents? And you don't want to be looked at like that. If you're trying to fix all the kids' issues with your spouse, your spouse may feel like you're overstepping. So when it comes to arguments between your stepchild and their parent, let their parents figure that out. Because you should only get into that discussion if you were invited by that kid's parent that's it that's the easiest way to deal with that you know when it comes to ignoring the other parents decisions okay I think that's bad all the way around if it's the kids health schooling or happiness that you're concerned about talk to your spouse and talk to the other parent period if y'all need to all sit down all three y'all together Or if that other parent is married also, all four of y'all together, then that's something you need to do. For the best of the kid, your spouse should co-parent with the other parent. Talking and respecting everybody's wishes. And if it can't be, you know, decided upon that, okay, we agree to this, then y'all need to agree to see that child, that, that parent that is also married to someone new needs to agree to see that child somewhere other than their home where that other person is, if you can't agree. So I had to deal with um, my one-year-old dad's girlfriend, uh, where, you know, I had Arya had a rash on her for like three days, and he didn't call me and tell me anything about the rash. She didn't call me and tell me anything about the rash. But she would like randomly send me text message about how um, she washed Ari's clothes. Or, you know, I would send Ari to her dad with medicine instructions and then she would text me how much medicine is Ari supposed to have. Well, I already told him, so why don't you just ask him? And if he's telling you to give her the medicine, he should have told you. So, But I would give her those answers, but in my head, that's what I'm thinking. So I, I called him and I asked him, I said, I said, why haven't you told me about this rash that's on her chest? And he was like, I don't know, I didn't see it. Well, if you have her at the house and you're supposed to be bathing her and changing her clothes, you would see it. Are you not doing that? And he was like, well, sometimes uh, such and such will do it. Well, if such and such is doing it, why didn't she say something? Since she could text me about everything else. And that was my thing. So I said, well, 
can we all talk? Because I would like to know, like, as far as Arya goes, what's going on in your house and how she's being taken care of since things are going unnoticed. So he was like, I don't understand why we all need to sit and talk. Because there's a communication blockage where if I tell you something about Ari, she's probably not getting the message because you're not giving it to her. If she tells you something about Ari in the house or what she would like, you're not telling me. So um, I, uh, he was complaining about one time about having to drive all the way to my house every time to drop her off or pick her up. And I said, well, I can bring her to your house sometimes if you want me to. He was like, well, you got to talk to such and such first, his girlfriend. It's your house. And why do I have to talk to your girlfriend about bringing your kid to your house? Because you're complaining about gas money driving to my house. So I was like, well, we all need to sit and talk. Because I don't need permission if it's an emergency to come to your house that you own from your girlfriend that's not what I'm about to do so because if it's an emergency and my child's in that house I'm coming because I know the address I've been there already so let's not fake the funk right now so he was avoiding like us all three sitting down so I have just called her on my own without um talking to him because he was beating around the bush I called I gave him like two weeks to set it up and tell me and he wouldn't he was avoided so I called her and I was like hey I said is it okay that we talk around 11 30 12 o'clock and she was like that's fine I could take a break from work they both work from home I was like cool so I'm talking to her I was like hey I'm just reaching out because I feel like communicating wise something is being lost between what I tell uh her dad and what you tell him and vice versa so this is the thing i'm calling about the rash issue if you are in the house and you're primarily bathing her i would rather you not be primarily bathing her if you can't tell me if something's going on with her health wise that's on her skin and if you see something i'm gonna need for you to tell her dad so it could be told to me because i'm the one that primarily takes her to the doctor she was like okay that's fine And I said, I would rather her dad be the one that's taking care of her in that household for that reason, because I need to know what's going on with her. And if he doesn't know, and I don't really don't talk to you, it's going to go unnoticed. And she was like, well, as a woman, uh, her dad will never be able to take care of uh, a child as well as I would. I said, no, that's bullshit. I have five brothers, and most of them have children, and they take care of their kids. I said, you have to let go and allow him to take care of our kid in the house. You guys have a child together, and we have a child together, and he needs to be taking care of her. I don't send Ari to his house for you to take care of her. Um, She was like, well, I don't want her to be treated like an outsider. I said, you don't have to treat her like an outsider. But if she needs a cream put on her rash, he needs to do it. So he can tell me it was put on her rash at this time. If she has medicine, he needs to do it. So he can tell me I gave her medicine at this time. If she um, needs something because we communicate, he needs to know that she needs something. Um, You know, whereas it is, you know, I asked him to cut her nails. He's telling me that he doesn't cut nails. Cut her nails. It's a kid. You know, you learn to do things for your kid because you need to do them. I feel like the way that she was thinking, she was enabling him to be a better parent by doing everything for him. So now, after that, when Ari would go to his house, I'm just like, well, she's primarily taking care of her. When he's supposed to have her, he works instead of making his schedule around taking care of her and he puts Ari on her and so she decides well she can't do x y and z because she's gonna have Ari and I told her I said I don't want you to change your schedule of what you want to do with your kids because Ari's going to his to the house I think you should be able to do what you want to do with your older kids or for yourself and when it comes to Ari and the days he's supposed to have Ari he needs to figure it out because Ari is not your primary responsibility when she's at the house it's his 
So don't change your schedule around just because Ari is coming to the house. Ari is something you choose to do, not something you have to do because you are not married. So I did have to have that discussion with her. Is she still doing um, obligated type stuff for Ari? She probably is because that's her mentality. That's how she's thinking about it. And I don't know about you, but I know about me. If I'm not married and my boyfriend has a child, I'm not changing my schedule around for my boyfriend's kid. And not saying, you know what, I can't take my older kids here and here because there's nothing for a baby to do there. Or I can't do this and this today and run my errands because there's a baby that's going to be here. No. I don't care if, you know, my boyfriend is choosing to play house and we're not married. I'm not doing it. I'll choose to do it sometimes, but I'm not obligated to do it. And so I had to have that discussion with her. But the bottom line is... The best way to step parent is to have a res- like a type of relationship with your spouse with that kid and also with the other parent with that kid. That's the best way to um, co-parent. No matter how much your spouse loves you, don't ever pressure them to choose you over their kid because you will fail. You will lose that battle. And if there's any parent out there who has remarried or married someone else that is not that child's other parent and you're choosing someone else over your kid, God bless you and I hope that your kid doesn't grow up to resent you for it because kids come before adults' needs, especially when they're dating or they're remarrying. Because that kid will always be your kid. Your spouse is a sometimes thing. I might be. And your girlfriend and your boyfriend is a might be. That's just life. That's just how it goes. Um, But that's my jits on step parenting and boundaries. All the way around, I feel like everybody's views can be respected. As long as it's put on the table. And don't ever try to dismiss, beat around the bush... When one of the parents asks for everybody to sit down and have a talk. Whenever you have another parent that's beating around the bush and wants to avoid sitting down and having a talk of clarity, that's a red flag that somebody's being dishonest and somebody doesn't want anything to change and somebody wants to keep a lot of shit under the rug. That is all. I'm just being honest with y'all. And... Good luck to your step parenting. Good luck to your co-parenting and all that jazz. I am out because these girls are rowdy and I'm trying to finish up watching a movie on Netflix. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>